Three, we are ready for game number four. Let's go on to our casters, F. Dot in high res Hindu man. We're heading right into game number four here. It's been an exciting series. The first two went to enemy pretty handedly. The team looked absolutely incredible. And as we walked into game number three, TSM sort of won it from the first minute. So in the game number four, I think both teams have to sort of forget about the rest of the series and just take this one game at a time. Well, it's two games left and enemy just have to win one. That's what they can go into with that sort yep. of outlook on it. They need to win one. TSM are the ones that are still in danger here, having to win back-to-back -back successive games against a team that have already taken previously <laughs> at this LAN back-to-back -back successive wins. Xing Chen and Hell. These are the bands we've seen Enemy every time. Do Xing not Chen care. They are Thor. They're banning the same thing. Time yep. That's the same bands they've done all the time, the first two. Capri's now taken off the table by TSM. Now the question is, is Sol the first pick for Enemy here, or do they look elsewhere? I think Zeus. Sol is the call. Zeus. Because support's, support's been high up on the list of priorities for enemy, but they still did choose last time round looking for the sub. It's going to be the circuit. Now that is a curveball. I would not have been surprised to see a Soul or a Zeus or a couple. Not so a big, Ket definitely threw me for a loop. Not necessarily a big curveball is what you'd like to see because we were talking, the, the analysts there, the analysts that were talking about um, the early game aggression coming out from Adjust. He likes the early game gods. Right. And Circuit is one that can get going a little bit earlier on, just like a Bastet and get to the backside. Last game he was they said the Macy has switched up from the Bastet, and if they did see Zeus be drafted by TSM, which they have done, they have a possibility of getting to that back line and deleting that character. Yeah, it's got to watch out for that Zeus for sure. He's selected almost immediately by the guys onto Team Solo mid. And I love what TSM did as well. They also drafted that Bellona once again for Bickham. Mm -hmm. Bickham looked so much better that game. Oh, yeah. He looked very, very comfortable. The play style worked out great for him in the lane. And Salt Machine didn't really have an answer to it that he has had every other matchup he's been in so far. On the side of enemy, to follow up that Sir Ket pick, we've only seen the Bastet Not played sure. by Adjust. So we'll see how he goes into the Sir Ket. Uh, Interesting, uh, pretty similar play styles, I guess you could say, with th there are a little bit of mechanical differences on the side of Sir Ket, but very in and out type characters. This needs to be a knee for TSM right now. They should pick up knee there, or is going to get banned away, I want to say, but they're going to default to bats again for Gars in the jungle. Yep. He's played to every single game so far, and Gars is an okay with it, but I don't think we'll see knee slip through this time from enemy, which means that Snoopy won't be able to have such an easy lane as he did with the knee that we've seen time and time again. I Hades think that's the issue. Hades banned out by Team Solo Mid. Again, Hades a very good matchup against Bologna. Able to get rid of the better half of the bludgeon. Sobek's still on the table, though, so maybe enemy will look to take that one away, potentially, as well, from Ionic, who's been on that one. Geb also available, but I still feel the Neath is the one they may look to try and battle away. I think the Neath is much more of a problem. Going to be the Geb, though, and I think that makes sense against Ionic as well. Um, obviously, the shield's going to be... A, an impact against the taunts mm -hmm. that are going to be coming out from Athena. And if they all get taunted in, then you're going to see the damage from the supernova rain down supreme as well. Now, the Kepri is what we've seen Pain to Beyond play this split, or this LAN, rather, Sobek picked up by Team Solo Mid. But before Kepri came out, Pain to Beyond was pretty much almost Athena exclusively. We saw Athena and Geb, Athena and Geb, Athena and Geb. Now we get to see Pain on Athena again. And... Pain has been very successful with this character in the past, so we'll see if he's able to bring that to LAN as well. It is very successful. He's won six games out of the nine that he's picked it so far this season, um, so it's a good go-to for him. And he's one of these supports that like to lead from the front. You've seen him on the likes of Odin before in previous splits mm -hmm. when Odin's been very passionate and available and useful to the team, but not needed this time round, though. What will we see the last two picks? So we're going to see a Cyrus again for Salt Machine. I like the it. final pick mid lane, would it be Zhong? No, we're going to go for Agni here. Where Agni is a character that I absolutely love. There's one stark problem with Agni. I guess you could say it's a problem. Uh, his early game, he is very much level one to four. He's a different character without those ultimates available. And he's very easy to prey on. But here's why I like the pick. Hun Bats is a character that really doesn't have an impact before level 5. So if they're going to pick Hun Bats, you can afford to pick the Agni. He's got the dash again out of issues from Zeus. I like the pick in mid lane. He's going to have some additional peel with the long range stuns. Chaos on the Agni. The thing is, you can get to Zeus with Agni. That's the key feature here. Yep. You can still deal damage to Zeus. One of the reasons we've seen Agni fall out of the meta a little bit, and everyone's like, why don't we see Agni anymore? Healers are prevalent, and healers really hurt Agni in terms of what he can... Because he's all about burst and dot damage after the fact. Exactly, well, the doesn't... heals come out. Yeah. But now with no healers in this game for the fact for TSM, Agni can be brought in here for Chaos and do what they're looking to do, which is pick up Boosh. Boosh is the key proponent uh -huh. of this matchup. 
One thing I didn't see though, Apollo was picked up there as well. He said the Neath is Snoopy. I expect to see the Neath again as that final pick. He's chosen the Apollo, so he's got global rotations himself. Right. The matchup up against the, um, the Sol though, I think it goes the same way as the Rama one, where he's going to play relatively safe in this lane and just accept the early game loss in terms of wave push. He has to, exactly. Sol has, the wave clear is superior to the Apollo, so definitely he'll be push out on back of his tower so we'll see a little bit of dominance in the long lane as long as everything goes correctly for enemy i mean there's, there's actually kill potential i guess for apollo in this lane against the sol as well because if sol uses the damage coming out from um using the damage coming out from a stellar burst and then you'll see apollo dive in and get the mez off right. before he can start channeling his three it means you can actually turn a fight around and deal damage to him and snoopy could look for an outplay there it's a potential one but it's not necessarily an easy one <laughs> easy Definitely nothing is going to be coming easy here in our fourth game. Don't forget, this is the best of five, ladies and gentlemen. TSM have to win two to move on. Enemy, well, this is match point if they make it work. Enemy is going to go into the jungle this time around. Game number three, teams played it very safe, hung out by their towers. Mm -hmm. This time around, though, enemy is going to get aggressive, look for the invade. Well, they've got the Athena with them as well as on top of Osiris, leading from the forefront. They're in a good spot. Good damage from Agni on the backside, too, as well as Vishim on that soul so yeah why not invade you can get a good turn off and delete someone like you did last time they won't find it this time though tsm much wiser we'll see where these teams opt to start looks again to be standard stuff taking a look at the builds nothing too incredible nothing too crazy can we just tune in with Hombats for a second? I want to see if Gars has actually got a power potion online because he had a ward in his inventory then. Uh, he's going to go back and get one now. Is. That makes it good because he had just already has one waiting for himself there as well. So two power pots for the junglers. Pretty much stand up. I thought we were going to see something weird about Gars there holding money back and not actually using it. He ended up putting a defensive ward down instead of an aggressive one that he was kind of looking for to begin the game off potentially with. I do like the call from TSM, though, with this ward on the right-hand side, just in case there is a rotation, looking for the early invade from enemy. There's a chance the side sticker may feel like they want to try and aggress there with the damage coming out, but instead, with those war coverage, they'll see it coming way ahead of time, so no invade more than likely. Speed buff goes the way of the jungler as we get underway here. Standard starts. I really want to take a look at this mid lane, though. Chaos versus the Boosh here. Agni versus Zeus. This is one of the oldest, oldest matchups you can think of when it comes to Smite. It's an old one, but once again, Agni does get bullied early in this matchup. Yeah, Generally, Agni's that's... have great wave play with that Path of Flames, as you can see, but he's not going to do anything against the Zeus here. He's got to play this very passive to begin with until he can get a couple of levels online. Yep. And then it's Zeus that has to turn on. When we hit level 5, Zeus is going to be very careful from the all-in, from the bombs that could come out, and Chaos could find a pick, potentially. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. This character is very much a... I mean, it's. I always go back to the old Magikarp Gyarados illusion, where it, it's just it, the character just doesn't do much before level five, and then once those ultimates are available, once the Rain of Fire actually comes online, all of a sudden you have ranged stuns, you have a breakdown of, of damage that you could deal from a distance. So the threat that Zeus is is much more potent right now, and you'll see the sort of choreographed start of the mid jungle doing the back camps, and then once Agni hits level five, a little bit more aggression. Yeah, a little bit more aggression from Chaos just needs to farm up for the time being and play it relatively safe. He's doing the right thing so far. And you can see on the left hand side here that they're both going quite aggressive here. Ionic's trying to do his what he can to find flips and things, but then it has to disappear mm -hmm. out of the engagement as soon as Visham looks to target him. Strong taunt into nothing. You can see the Pogo just goes on to Snoopy time and time again here. He has gone for the Death's Toll, though, and the, the extra sustain build here. Yes. Will he go for Devourer's Gauntlet? Well, yet to be seen, more than likely, but he does have the opportunity to go for that Soul Eater as well, if he so chooses. It's extra true. health, extra sustain in the lane, and the matchup becomes a little bit easier for him then. I think most likely we see the Devourer's Gloves. Pretty, pretty classic build coming out of the Apollo. On the so other side, like Slap Fight going strong. As expected, you'll see that sort of aggression, but left hand side is a bigger amount of abuse going on from TSM there. Iona clearly must have got something off to really put them in an awkward position yeah. like that um, and allow Snoopy to just get a free damage because Snoopy's not been hit at all. They're both still full health. That was just a good little skirmish fight in TSM's favor that's very important in this matchup. 
I mean, this lane is definitely in Seoul's favor, but right now, on paper, but in practice right now, Team Solomon really pushing down the, the long lane. I mean, when you, when you type, when you say in her favor, what we're always looking at is the Hunter versus Hunter alone. When you combine the supports into the mix as well, things do take a difference there. And if Yonic is finding charge preys onto either of these yeah. targets, it's putting the teammate also in danger too. Snoopy's just got a position correctly and not panic too much. You saw him get taunted earlier and didn't really move away. Just stood there and fired damage back. Well, the guys on enemy able to heal up a little bit now. Vicium and Pain to be on almost full HP. What you're seeing right there is just a threat of Sobek. He shows up and he can, <laughs> like you said, one charge prey is going to put the enemy in a bad spot. So by putting himself in front of the enemy wave, he can just toss the character into the minions and just create a problem. Look at this on the right hand side though again. Just is roaming around this right hand side of the map. I expect to see him look for a pick on the Boosh or Gars in mid. Circuit and Agony combo together can delete someone potentially very quickly. Especially when they don't have beads online just yet. Mm -hmm. And it's a key factor to try and pick that route potentially when it's available. I want to see Chaos go back and get boots and beads online so that if they do see Gars turn up to the fight when they're looking to pick Boosh, which is their primary target really, they can just beads out of that fair no evil to get out of danger. Charge prey off the mark and Divion able to dodge that one real quick. But a little like bit of an evade coming out from Team Solomid, trying to look towards the attack speed buff of the guys on enemy, but a little bit too much attention being paid by enemy, just pretty much standing oh, guard. The, the dash is down. Oh, if that monkey connected, it could have been a different story there. His pain, Divion did just charge onto Snoopy, which you saw just on the left of your camera there. And now both teams just going to group on this side, looking to defend the purple buff his enemy, and aggress was TSM for the time being. But if you remember the last time that happened, Vision picked up a triple. Vicium picked up a triple, of course, but Zeus also, the Boosh, wound up making moves as well. So this time, enemy, basically what happened the last time in the last game, we saw the rotation out of Team Solo mid's mid. They went four men onto the left-hand side of the map, and everything sort of went TSM's way oh, so Vicium cleaned up. But this time, enemy was ready, and there was nothing for Boosh to grab. Bickham just bullied Salt Machine all the way out of lane there. Forced the ultimate out from him. Bickham's is down too, but you can see how much HP and mana Bickham's on there. So mm -hmm. starting to bully this lane again is Bickham. This Bologna pick for him, Salt Machine's not had an answer to it. He's picked right. Osiris twice, and he's not, having, he's not had a good laning phase on that. That disarm really showing Osiris a little bit of issues. Malona, of course, uh, able to use the Scourge to stop the basic attacks coming out. And a lot of what Osiris does is basic attack based. So. Well, it's one of those things as well that now because Salt Machine got forced out of lane there, he had to go back, didn't have the gold to get any items online, so had to go teleport. Meanwhile, Bickham abused the situation to go back to base, not going to miss an experience, doesn't have to go teleport, and instead starts working towards potentially that mid-guardian melee went last game. So, and a small item advantage lead for Bickham in this laning phase now, and I think that's why we're going to start seeing a just coming over to camp. Mid lane. Nothing too exciting going on here. Uh, still zero kills on the board as we approach our sixth minute. The solo lane is where we're seeing so much action with these guys. They haven't been able to nail a kill into man. But as you said, Bickham has forced Sol Salt Machine out a little bit. Salt Machine, this time around, really pushing the enemy on his tower. Yeah, he's just putting the poke pressure wrong because he had a wave with him to begin with. But it'll be fine for Bickham here. He's not too worried. Look at the return damage immediately with just one bludgeon there between the two. These two are still fine to continue trading, but Bickham's definitely winning overall because uh -oh. of it. Lord of the Afterlife is going to get forced all instead of Thena ultimate. That should be signs for TSM to look for something elsewhere. And... It's a little bit too early, I think, to go for directly for the Gold Fury, but that Athena Ultimate is definitely a big win for TSM. Mid lane, Adjust is looking potentially at Gars there, but Gars positioned nicely for the time, he's not going to find anything. You can see that they're looking for a pick, potentially on Vicium there with Ionic. Mm -hmm. Ionic looking for the aggression, but got to land the charge prey. Doesn't look like he found it there, unfortunately. Vicium going to be safe under his tower. Right side, here comes Adjust. You did mention this. The vision is on the side. Of enemy. Well, you also know Bickham's Over the top. down as well. So Bickham this gets taunted. Damage with the zigzag. This is a problem. He's got the big ult and it just box. gets the first blood. Oh, Guards nice. a hair too late. Not able to find the return he kill. Enemy the on the board first. He missed the monkey. If he landed the throw monkey there, he was definitely going to be able to pick up the kill onto Salt Machine. And they would have turned it around with a Fear No Evil as well, which would have just forced or just into a bad spot, especially with Boosh's rotation as well. Neonic in some trouble here, stunned out by the Agni, taunted into more damage, but still alive, 25%. That was a good rotation from TSM in response to that aggression coming out from Enemy, though, but Enemy is the one that found the kill, and now... Snoopy like dash is down, trouble. he's slowed, he's got the ult, can they deal the damage? Snoopy gets out by the skin of his teeth! Smallest amount of a misplay Ooh. from Vishim there. 
the smallest little v display. He used the supernova backwards, forwards, backwards. If he would have just gone dot, 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 right, just left to right, and painted it, he would have killed Snoopy. It's, such, mm. it's a tiny thing to really talk about because he, he did the path of where he thought Snoopy was right. going and then changed the trajectory when he realized he was chilling and all. If he hadn't done that and just did it in place, he would have found the kill on Snoopy. Well, that's one of the, this is a newer character, so less hours in the gym, so to speak. Gars drops the ultimate in defense. Adjust deals a bunch of damage. All Here comes Pick'em pick all the way from the solo lane, but unable to really make something happen. The ultimate is down That's out of both Pick'em and Gars. That's it, Cap. Mobility is the key. and managed to get away with the Deathbane, just skip, hop, and a jump away to get themselves out of danger for now. So enemy hold this one first blood for themselves. It did go to Sir Cat as well, which is not a bad thing to be, you're not gonna be upset about it going to Sir Cat, that's for sure. Bickham still able to bully Salt Machine. And that's just itemization that's working out for him too. Slowly but surely, I mean, it's, it's, a bit, it's gonna be one of those matches where Bickham's now just starting to dominate a little bit. The minion arch is making an impact here. Salt Machine feels like he could take this trade on though, just because he was in his passive form there from getting right. the extra stacks. Look at that player damage pick up. In the, of course, the soul laners are going to be up top because they've been sort of slap fighting each other the whole time. Only one kill on the board, and that happened on the other side of things. But so they're going to wind up on the top. But Bickham, basically what we're showing is he's getting the better of this matchup so far, despite being the player to fall first. I was wondering what Just was going to do there. It looked like they would potentially think about looking for a tier one tower, at least putting pressure on, but they should expect that Gars is on this side of the map with the speed buff, just spawning up two. And just is just so experienced where he can. Both teams playing this a lot slower this oh, time yeah. round. They're oh, both yeah. looking for a pick more than anything else. They're not looking for massive team fights. And I think they both realize, it's TSM that are more patient, I feel, because they realize it's still, they've got to win two still more. Still match point. Still match point <laughs> in favor of enemy. Enemy has their opponent right up against the wall. They weren't able to seal the deal last time around. We'll see if they are they are able to do so in this one. You saw Vishen there trying to freeze the wave a little bit, but I don't think Snoopy's too worried right now. With those Devourers Gauntlets online and near enough, well, halfway to stack so far, it's not so bad, but right hand side, aggression from enemy could get turned. Ultimate force out of, well, Gars, Athena, and Bickham. So a lot of ults being used right there. Here comes Zeus, Boosh might be in some trouble. Still has ultimate available. He's gonna drop it right there. Can enemy take him down before the ultimate? Not quite. Detonate goes off, but Boosh ultimately does fall. Over the top comes Gars. He's the got kiss. the slow. He's got the damage. The burn! All by himself is chaos. He's got no He's bombs. gotta get out of there. Doesn't have a body. He's got one bomb left on him, and now he's Snoopy's rotation into a troublesome situation. Nope. He will survive, though, as Gars with the overhand smash finds it. Blink him from a just looking deep for the kill on Snoopy. Nope. But a quick bludgeon comes out from Bickham. And nope. it's four for one. Too much. Just too much. Too much. I mean, so Snoopy's decision right there, I like it because it was an Agni and not another mage. The difference between an Agni and other mages is that the burst from Agni is staggered. You can drop three bombs, but they're three separate spells. If a Kraken comes out in that situation, Snoopy's dead. But because it's a bomb, a bomb, a flame wave, and a bomb, Snoopy's able to seal the deal onto the opponent mage before Snoopy dies. He, so. only, had, he only had one bomb was the key there. If he had the second bomb, he was definitely dead. Snoopy jumps into a really dangerous position there, and honestly. Um, and then adjust, he should have just given up. Adjust blinks in looking for the, the pick on Snoopy in, in response. Yeah. Doesn't work out as well. The grand scheme of things though, it's not terrible because the Gold Fury still stands. It does even things back up. We saw the experience in Gold Charts there as well. You can see what Snoopy's doing well against Vishim here is that he's not actually really losing this lane terribly. That rotation worked out well for him. Here comes the However, on adjust. the left side of the map this time around. Adjust is here and they know he's not going to ultimate Snoopy, so I think that's why they're looking for the extra pressure. Just going to take up some farm. Not really look for the gank right there. Oh, there's a the ward. He was starting a ward just at the corner between the two. So they saw him rotate yep. in there and then immediately Snoopy backs away, jumps with a hop and a skip, and they have him fine. Yeah, right there on the entrance, you can see on the left side of the entrance to the dual lane, there's a ward. So as soon as it just walked over it, everybody on the team knew it was there. Keep an eye on Pink because he'll be looking for picks every time he can, and Boosh is one of them. It was a good taunt, and he's got no beads at the moment. Oh, adjust to the backside, he's going to find the pick on Boosh here. I think Boosh should fall down to the dot damage, or will he? It's adjust that gets flipped in by Ionic, though. One for one trade, Snoopy's in the sky. Snoopy comes crashing down into a pile of flames. Chaos with a strong stun to prevent any real aggression coming out from the rotation out of Snoopy. But the one for one trade happens first. 
adjust for the boosh. You know, anything that keeps that Zeus down, I think it's a good look for team for enemy. That's the whole game plan. They That's lost the, the game to Zeus plan. last time. Keep boosh out of the game. Why do Pain goes in with the Tom because he knows Boosh's beads are still on cooldown from yep. the last engagement where they found the kill onto him. And then from there, you saw it just come in and just managed to pick up the rest of the damage that was required to secure the kill. He did get traded out nicely, not because he misplayed it. It was more Ionic with a very good flip that put him into an awkward spot. Ionic on this so bad, he's been playing it the whole time. Here, Pain de Vion gets mezzed out and flipped away from what could have been an interesting fight. TSM are looking a lot stronger these the past two games, honestly, between the two. It's a much better situation for him to be in right now. The dual lane's having an easier time, as is the solo laner and the jungler. And I mean, a large part of that is the is what these junglers have been able to do and how they've been able to help their teams. Adjust has been a huge part of all three kills that enemy have on the board right there. And Gars consistently showing up with this Fear No Evil, able to drop it down and start fights. But you can see as, as their score performance shows and the damage more than anything else is that damage-wise, Adjust is the guy in the forefront to find the kills. A lot of people have mentioned him as the potential superstar of this team before, and it shows with how much damage he does. Gars, on the other hand, though, average amount of damage for his team because his team as a whole works as a unit, right. but he's not the only hard carry on the team. They have potential, potentially five hard carries. Salt Machine, trying to get a little interesting. Just gets a glimpse of what Team Solomon's doing up by the blue buff and opts to play it safe. The way these games have gone between the two, though, don't expect this game to last too much longer because they've all been under 30 minutes so far. And I expect that one quick pick and a goal for you will turn the tide of battle one way or another. Ionic forced into the ult. So, lurking in the waters, now down for the count. For free as well, that's the important thing. Now they can look to aggressive mid lane because they know Ionic's on the left-hand side. The bombs are raining down. Zeus is trying to do what he can to blow up Adjust, who gets the ultimate from Pain Divion to give him the extra protections. But Snoopy's in the sky! Snoopy looking for the pick. Snoopy comes down onto Vicium. Vicium channeling that third ability, so unable to really take damage. Pick him in some trouble with the rotation from the solo lane. He gets stunned out after a good taunt on the side of Pain de Beyond, but nothing really of consequence coming out from all of those ultimates and all of that damage. Yeah, both the, both the solo lanes still have their ultimates, but everybody else is down. Vicium, though, does have Supernova too. This is where you strike. This, if, if I'm enemy, this is where this is where I strike. Boosh has no ultimate. Boosh has no beads. Let's Ooh, listen to the them bomb. and see if they're thinking the same thing as Chaos starts off the fight. Yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. Force it, force it, force it. If they come, they fight. Flag, 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 flag. Uh, reset, reset. Just go throwers. Pause on gold, pause on gold, pause on gold, pause on gold. Pick him up, pick him up, pick him up. Yeah, he's on, he's on. Take it, take it, take it. Yeah, take it, take it there. Come on, on the floor, on the floor. Take this fight, take this fight. 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 Nice, nice. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Left tower, left tower, left tower, left tower. Yes, tower. yes, yes, yes. Bro, bro, bro. On me, on me, on me. Get on purple. I can't tower by myself. I can't tower by myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, defend, solid, go defend, Melo. Solid, I can't. I can't win. Oh, I, I can't win with you. I'm gonna check it, bro. Alright, I'm gonna reset. I'll yeah, let you guys yeah, do that. I'm just resetting. Do you have to do this? I'm resetting. I'm resetting. Careful, careful. It's fine. Yep. That's the way we're going. We can't like all these. Let's go if they come. They're right there. There's two here, two here. Careful. I'm backing up, I'm backing up. I'm running my way. Salt. Let's get purple. Yep, I'm out. That's myself, too. That's really good. Pandy Beyond set it for me. Beautiful. Oh, there was an Xbox tournament the other week, and there was a word there. Nice! And that's exactly what that was for the boys of Enemy. The whole the whole little engagement worked out well. Snoopy was doing Golf Fury. What? Why? They found the pick on Bushin, but because well, they didn't realize they had vision. They didn't have vision of him doing it. And they're like, oh, he's, he's doing it. So he was trying to sneak that one in there. But one thing you can notice in this game is the Agni is making a, such a big impact. Being able to get the damage off onto Zeus in the back line and being able to avoid the front line because he's like, well, I'm just dropping bombs, guys. You know, you, you want to come at me? I'm going to path the flames away. It's making such a bigger impact. Even if they run the bass step with this as well, it still would have gone similarly. Yeah. But I think the fact that Adjust is on a circuit. You get pinned in place when you use the ultimate, and when the ultimate gets hit on you from Sir Cat. So when you're still in place, you're taking bomb drops to the head every time. And also, it, it creates the path on the floor of where those bombs are going to drop. I just can just throw him into him every time. <laughs> and again, Boosh right there. He didn't have the ult. That's when Ze Zeus is always scary. The detonate is really, the detonate, like I said, is really the, the, the oomph behind the punch. Mm -hmm. But the ultimate just creates, it's, it's so big. It, it is. You can't fight. The Zeus ult is important, but the big key is keeping his beads on cooldown. You can it, see that he's yes. investing into a tier two beads now. So the whole job of this game is Pain Divion's got to be looking for taunts consistently to force those beads. And the moment that happens, we'll see a just aggress looking for the ultimate to allow Chaos to drop bombs on the back of him as well. And when the fight from because if you look at the lineup of TSM when Zeus goes down 
it's more of a sustained damage output that they've got, not the burst that Azus can put out in these team fights. Well, with that incredible turn of events, five to five on the kills, and Team Solomid previously had the lead. They're now trailing by 2,000. Team fight goes overwhelmingly in enemy's favor, and then they pick up pretty much a free gold screen delivered to them, courtesy of Snoopy. Courtesy of Snoopy indeed. And the one thing that's always nice to know is look at the solo laners between the two and how the domination factor changes between them when neither of them have been involved too much in fights either. Right. And the gold is relatively, I want to say, even between them. It's about a Pretty 500 much. gold difference. Just keep in mind how the solo laner, solo laners are impacted based off how the rest of the team is doing. You can see that enemy have a small advantage now. Just a small one. But when you're up two games to one in a best of five scenario, Adjust. It's a great situation. Adjust, dealing with the, the speed buff away from the enemy jungler. Very just... I mean, so that's one of the good things that you have when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to Sir Cat. She's got so many jumps and leaps and abilities. I'm going to go invade the speed buff. If they come, I can get away, no I mean, problem. He only he did that because he knew he had beads as well, and he also had blink. Exactly. Worst case scenario, he can get himself out of danger. Yes, he used beads, but it's rank three. If it was a rank one beads, it would be a different story <laughs> going in there all on his own. But it's just starting to deny a little bit now his, t um, his enemy away from TSM again. TSM are having a hard time finding an answer to protecting their Zeus. And you know, that's what we saw out of enemy in games number one and two, was that they got this they got this small, almost marginal lead by way of a gold fury. And then small things. We'll take a tier one tower and completely retreat. You know what? We're going to take a blue buff and completely retreat. And those small little bites is what enemy has been able to do and really turn them into a larger lead. Yeah, it's not the same mistakes that TSM have been making before the, the last two games at all. But enemy is still finding the, the small wins, which is important yeah. for them. Off the back of it, the goal fear was the key one there. And I think it was a 50-50 call whether Snoopy should have been doing that. A lot of people were like, why is he doing goal fear? And even enemy were like, what? Oh, cool, we leashed it. Sweet, we get a free goal fury. Thanks very much. And it just didn't work out for them. If he would have found if TSM would have found it, everyone would have been like, beautiful Snoopy, what a great call. I love the, I, I love the, the quick thinking of enemy. Uh, the, the very quick call, because you, you saw, in that situation, everybody just sort of walks away, right? I don't want to deal with it. You, if there's a team fight, you don't want to have the added damage of Gold Fury attacking you. Pain to Vion said, no, take it. He made the decision right there. There wasn't any hesitation in his voice, and that's why Enemy was able to go for it. So, well, the good shot call. Zeus was down, and Fear No Evil wasn't available. Yep. So it's like, well, what's the threat? That's the that's the most dangerous threat. It's Snoopy. So if I turn onto him, we should be able to pick it up with the burst damage we have. <laughs> Left hand side aggression onto Snoopy though. But <laughs> that Mez. Oh my God. Was there a ward? Nope. That's why you wear headphones. Audio cue. You hear that blink? It's one of the scariest sounds in Smite when you get blinked on. And immediately, just from the audio cue, hits the mez, walks away. I'm just saying it was quick because he didn't even get the kiss off. And to get the kiss off is the natural response that you do when you jump, jump over the wall. When you've got the advantage, it's very difficult to not at least find the kiss. But the mez was fantastic. Gold Fury started, this time by enemy. Ionic is aware. Well, Team Solomon in general are aware. Ionic showing his face. Snoopy's here as well. In comes Gars. Gars has the ult. Enemy walks away. Now, what actually happened there from Enemy was they were seeing if they can find a pick before Zeus turned up to the engagement. Zeus had gone back to base there. Boosh was on his way back to lane. They looked to try and bait somebody in and, you know, put him in a bad spot so right. he could turn it into a 4v5 before Zeus arrived. As soon as Zeus was back in mid lane, they all dis continue, discontinued what they were doing. Backed away again. Just keep an eye on when the backs are happening, when the Gold Fury is attempted. Vishium now. Coming around the back side. So, one of the differences, we'll take a look. Vishium tries to solo this. Well, his team's all right here. Well, there is. Oh, they're looking for picks. There you problem. go. Double taunt. Damage from a distance. Agni dealing it. Ionic very low. And with that ult, that should be toast onto the toast. Sobek. Important. He got out of the way. I like that play. Ionic did save his ultimate there. He thought he was going to be able to get away scot free without having to use his ultimate. But that's when I just realized hold on a minute, if I ult him now, he'll die. And that was the big key factor. The only problem is, I don't think enemy has much more follow up to continue aggression on the Gulf Fury. So, yes, they get a pick, but I don't think they can get any more. I don't think they can get any more either, Hindu. And before this next fight, I want to point out a very small thing that I liked about Ionic. Ionic died. He had the ultimate from Sir Ket. He used Heavenly Agility to walk away from the Zeus so the ultimate wouldn't spread. Aggression again, no, Love the small out. moves. With a Justin Penny beyond, but now back, they're looking for Taunts. They're going to find it on Gars. Force the beats. Meanwhile, though, Eagles rallying the backside from Bickham. Going to force Vishim into an awkward spot. Has to disengage too. Salt Machine, though, created a very good zone, so they couldn't continue pressure. All the all the, all the the relevant ults for enemy are down. You've got Vishiums, which is okay, and Bickham's or uh, Chaos is, is always 
up for the most Jaws part. Is off Team Solo mid, on the other hand, everything but Eagles Rally. Fan That's evil. scary. Fan this is evil. a poor situation for enemy right now to be looking at this gold sphere. They're still looking to try and force a fight. Keep an eye on Pain Divion. He's looking for taunts all the time. Remember, Gauze does not have beads right now. He used them in the last engagement, so they're still down for 100 seconds here. This could be an ex extended team fight for a long period yeah. of time between you, the two. You know, taking a second look at this, uh, taking a second look at the ultimates on enemy, none of them really are, are super large absorbing team fight ultimates the way TSMs are. That one's going to be dropped by the jungler. Oh, Salt Machine picks up the first kill onto the support to start this team fight. Pick him, forced out on the left hand side, and here comes the aggression out of enemy. Boosh's ultimate is down, and he'll dance in it, but he'll die in it. Pain to be on with the eighth kill on the board for enemy. And that's a gold fury for enemy. Now, the rest of TSM have to disengage from this engagement completely. Ionic is dead for too long. Boosh knew that his team were falling apart. He stood and tried to deal damage yep. and find a killing response. They don't find one, so enemy take a second gold fury of this game. And like, like I said before, I mean, at first glance, you look at enemy and you say all their ultimates are down. But take a look at the ults. Pain de Vion's ult is going to be largely used defensively. A just ult is good for a pick. Salt Machine's ultimate, I mean, sure, it's damage, right? But this enemy team can fight without their ultimates really available for them. So they take the situation. Team Solo made oh, as soon as they drop their ult, Beckham, that's it. Beckham, you better run, buddy. He actually had to force the ult of Eagle's rally there. Luckily, they didn't continue the chase onto him. Good respect from enemy though. That is smart play from them. I expect them to chase and find the kill on Bickham there, but probably put themselves in an awkward spot. Discipline. That's what I've seen the most out of enemy, I think, is their ability to take something and walk away. We've seen mistakes out of enemy. They are by no means a perfect team, but the one mistake I haven't seen as Ionic drops again to adjust is the overstay. We haven't really seen enemy overstay their welcome in too many engagements. They are very quick to retreat. I missed that. Why was Ionic there? I didn't, I didn't understand. He was really far pushed up. Snoopy was on the left-hand side looking for a tier two. He had no teammates with him. I was confused how he ended up in that awkward position. Wanted, wanted to get a closer look at enemy. He got a closer look at enemy from his base as well. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Another strong engagement going the way of enemy. Nine to five on the kill charts. 55,000 gold. That gives... Enemy a 5,000 gold lead in this one, which of course is match point. If enemy take this game, Hindu man, they go on to fight Envy. Just to be clear, TSM only clean swept one team this split. One team the whole of the season, and it was this one. Enemy. It was 4-0 in favor of TSM for the whole split. This, though, is looking like a potential 3-1 in favor of Enemy at Lamb. I mean, j just, to, just to highlight that, that's over two separate Fights. We do, we do. We do. We do. Two sets separate of TSM. Two. two separate TSM teams, technically yeah. as well. Beat <laughs> this we, enemy lineup. The way the regular season works in Smite is teams fight series of two, mm -hmm. right? So, Team Solo mid beat enemy pretty hard, two in a row. Can you believe? And then month later do the same thing. But when it comes to LAN, when it comes to when it actually matters, Hindu enemies turning everything up to eleven. But the funny thing is, is enemies never been to LAN before either. Pain and they're, has against, they're against an experienced TSM team that have been multiple times around the world. The shot caller has been to land. Pain to be on is the only ago. one on this team that That's has been to land. a long time ago. Over a year ago. It, it sure. went on two years, actually. But, I mean, it's many lands. It's and, I mean, the way this team has worked, Pain to be on has been sort of the general. He put this team together. It's been his. And, as you said, he's not exactly barking orders. It's sort of a, a team idea. But when it comes to, you know, how to, how to be here and be in the... Oh. Be in a land environment, Payne's able to push that onto his teammates. They're compressed again. He's not panicking, though, which is a very smart idea. Didn't use the Eagles rally and just walked away. Snoopy's getting free split push, though, which is a great thing for TSM here. That tier two tower on the left should yeah. fall down here, but it looks like enemy really want to trade. They want to do some sort That's of base race up against Snoopy. I don't like this. Snoopy is a clock right here. He's basically, I mean, Snoopy's pushing left oh. and middle lane is oh. being pushed as well. Enemy have to get a Phoenix. If they don't get a Phoenix, this is a bad situation. They could go for a fire giant instead if they want to. They're not going to look at, are they going to get a tier two tower here? It looks like they're going to stay for it, but they've not got that much damage to really bring this one so, down. So Vigium backs, protects the left hand Phoenix, unable to protect the middle tower. We'll take a look at the split push cam. We'll fo we're following along with Snoopy as he makes his push down the middle lane. Vigium was able to provide triage enough to protect the Phoenixes, but ultimately the towers will fall. Ult ultimately, the, the fight is lost by enemy there. Honestly, they find one pick. Will TSM come out on top? They can come back and defend the fire giant now, unless something crazy happens at the fire giant. Beads down. That's not big enough yet. Beads down enough. for Gars. That's a big deal. Fire giant stands, though. Fire giant stands. 
enemy have to give this up. They can't contest this. Yannick's back up in a second. Payne's looking for taunts, and if Payne can get a taunt onto Gars now, maybe they've got a chance. There's a taunt. Trouble for Pickham. He's still above 50% HP. That is a tanky Bologna. You're not going to get much out of that one. This isn't working out so far for enemy. This game plan of letting Snoopy split is still not working. Guards, so focused. Snoopy should head back to the left-hand lane. So Snoopy should head back to dual lane right now and push Phoenix. He can go and put pressure on that Phoenix and still rotate to this fight. With he his wants ultimate. to be here for the fight. He wants to be here for the start of this fight. I don't know why he wants to be here then when his Phoenix is available for them. Still, Payne's looking for picks and Garth has no beads. Yeah, Garth has Gars no beads and everyone knows it. Chaos winds up on the top. Fear no evil has no impact at all. It's a 4v5 enemies hitting the gas pedal. Visham has zoned out boost from the engagement too and the bombs dropping from Chaos is going to push TSM back again. With the tier two tower being down here, enemy might look for the Phoenix here, or they look for more picks with blinks, as well as, you know, the, the taunts coming out from Pain de Leon, but they're gonna start fire. Fire Darren started, Neonic is here, lurking in the waters, does a great job of contesting these objectives. Fire Giant, 50%. It's a lot of damage coming out of the Vicium. Salt on zone duty with Pain too. They're gonna turn attention to Eonic. They're looking to burst Eonic down as well here. Pop, pick up the pop. He's still alive though, still alive. The dots will not be enough just yet. Supernova did some work and Salt Machine. Salt Machine with the two for one, the ultimate over the front line. Snoopy's gonna fall as well thanks to a strong crit out of a just. There's 14, make that 15 kills on the board for enemy. They've tripled the kill count okay. of team solo I, mid. I, I saw, did you see that line in their face then? They were like, let's go for the... Okay, let's get Fire Giant first. Let's not overdo this. Let's not make a mistake yep. here because we're about yep. to take down TSM. But the Fire Giant is the first thing. We've still got towers to bring down as well. But at the moment, this is enemy's game. This very, very much so. I mean, the bus enemy got no is in the driver's seat. Still no beads. Got no still beads. no life. Gars goes down one more time. That's the second kill onto the jungler. Enemy, they have a Fire Giant. Enemy, they have a 6,000 gold lead. They have a game lead in the series. Three wins to go on to the next round. Yonic. And it's looking like this is enemy's trip. Oh, it is now. It is now. This is just the back of TSM has been broken. The disheveled husk is all that stands. Boosh is the only one there now, as the Phoenixes are slowly falling down. They can't stop this alone. Snoopy and Boosh have got to do something. Tell you what they'll do. They'll force back Pain de Vion for a second, but the Phoenix is still going to fall. Boosh is scary. I'm still afraid of the Zeus. But with two Phoenixes down, with a 9,000 gold lead, enemy. Enemy is looking like they're ready to, ready to play enemy. If you, if you just tuned in and you saw 17 to 5, you'd be like, well, this game's done. But it wasn't the case of, it was 5-5. No. Five, five. Yeah. It was 5-5. Five, five. TSM were on equal phone with them, and then one Gold Fury that turned into two Gold Furies. And now TSM. The TS TSM finished third at the World Championships last year, and now on the cusp of exit in the first round of the Super Regionals. Enemy, I mean, this is the team that's surprising. There, there are two people in the world right now watching saying I told you so, and everyone else is surprised. I don't think anybody expected this level of performance out of the guys on this squad. And watching this series has been an absolute pleasure. Because as you mentioned so many times, Hindu Man, with games one and two, and we're still seeing it, TSM has been making a couple of mistakes, but that's not the story. Enemy has just stepped it up, and they're playing good smite. Well, they're still going to close the game, though. We're not too far ahead of ourselves. Almost. But now they've got a tier two time on the left and a Phoenix still remaining. TSM still have opportunities. They've got split pushes Very to much follow, so. but they have to make a good stand. Boosh has to be positioned perfectly and protected perfectly. Ionic has to get a good engage and a prime target. So like Vishim, Chaos for me has made a big impact on this agony this game, but Pain Divion's taunts have just evaporated multiple Chaos times takes time out time again. That's fine though, that's fine. The real defense here, fine. the real defense is Boosh and Gars. But Bush and Gars are the ones that matter right now for defending popped. this Phoenix There's the and the coming out again. Gars has forced the beads. Meanwhile, Bickham on the backside looks for Vishim. Bickham gets bursted down, though. He's in a world of hurt on the back. Nobody is there to There's Gars. There's no Gars. Evil. There's Gars and Bush. Bush takes out one. Bickham's dead, but Bush takes out one. Gars, Gars takes one. out one. 
Boosh falls down on the backside to Salt Machine. Yonic did get the burst off. Pain's in trouble. Salt Machine and Pain Divi on the only two members. But the Titan! The Titan is falling to Fire Minions! The boys in TSM have got to run back. Salt Machine can end this alone with the support. No, no way. Pain's coming Salt Machine in, too. in by himself on top of the they Titan! Did it. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Solo Mid has been knocked out in the first round. Congratulations! To enemy. What a performance from the boys, man. And the end of that game, too, that was a really good defense from TSM. A yeah. really good defense. They made it 2 2. The difference was those fire minions on the Titan the whole time that engagement was going off. Whole I, time. Wow. I, that was incredible. And again, two decisions that I absolutely loved right there. The first was the decision to play it safe. Mm -hmm. uh, the fire giant comes and you get the middle and, and right Phoenix. It's very easy to say, we can get these picks and go on into the base. Instead, enemy played it safe. But then what I, what I liked the most, on the left-hand side, as I said, the defense was all about Boosh and Gars, and they did it. They took out three members of the enemy team, right? That was the defense. Well, they saw that the firemen were going in, and last time it was about being safe. This time it was about knowing how much you could bite off, and that's what we saw. We saw the jump in from Salt Machine and the Athena Ultimate, bang! Honestly, for me, Enemy and their compositions, their pick band phases have been amazing. They knew what their strategies were coming into every game. The first two games went clearly in Enemy's way because of their pick band strategies. Game three, TSM come back, have no answers to Enemy. Enemy have yeah. no answers. What we did do, though, however, is see the Agony transition in Game 4. Right. That Agony made an impact. With the support of Athena, Agony being able to get to the Zeus, which was the biggest issue TSM showed today, was the Zeus. Yeah. An enemy had an answer. The damage from a distance really worked out. Let's take a look at the first blood and how everything started, and it was a just on the circuit. And this was just a little bit earlier on, where, to say, just before this, Bickham had gone aggressive onto Salt Machine there, and Salt Machine had done all the work to survive, and then went, hey, guess what? We're just coming over here, Bickham's just used his ultimate, I've still got mine too, we can find a kill. You want to talk about taking down the Titans, as I said, I mean, I don't have any real numbers, but I really don't think too many people out there had much faith for this series to go in, but I'll tell you right now, I'm looking at some of the guys on the side of the enemy, and they just, they knew it from the Day one. The, the funny thing is, is that coming into this split, right, Enemy were a team that Pain de Vion put together, yep. right? He put them together on his own, and everyone was like, this is an eighth seed team. This is Fat Chunks 2.0. Yeah. That's what people were calling them. They just beat TSM. They looked incredible. No, TSM at Wilt. And as I said, the one person that might have known that this series was going to go the way it did is Pain de Vion, and that's exactly who Kelly's sitting with. Congratulations. Oh, Pain de Vion, congratulations. <laughs> Three and one against TSM. Mm. Just how are you feeling right now? I'm like super excited. Like I, I've been yelling nonstop because that's what I do like in scrims. <laughs> that's so. what they were saying when we yeah. were all listening to the game that you're just nonstop yeah. talking, nonstop going. It's my job on my team to like yell at everybody, so and everything obviously too. So, yeah. <laughs> so I know that uh, a question that Divi wanted to ask you is why did you not pick Athena in the third game? Uh, we went for a Jean-Cui composition, um, and Geb shield on Jean-Cui means that he rushes in, he's unkillable because of his ultimate, and then you give him Geb shield with that. It's really hard to deal with it. Uh, it backfired a little bit because I keep getting picked because I'm, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I Geb because I, I don't play Kepri. So, uh, so yeah, that's why. So why didn't, but, but you're like known for Athena. Why didn't we see Athena earlier out of you? Uh, we've been running a ton of comps with Athena and Kepri. It just happened that we liked our Kepri with like Hell, because uh, he can revive her when she's, she's getting bursted. And uh, overall, he has amazing push in lane, so I really like him. So, yeah. why, why were you so confident heading into this matchup? Like, I, I know, like, all of your team was pretty confident. Everyone else said, like, it, it wasn't just it wasn't just Anatoly <laughs> and I. Like, I promise, like, most people were yeah, saying yeah. that Team Soul was going to win this. Do you feel like you guys played just out of the out of the world, or did you really abuse Team Soul amid's mistakes? What, like, a little bit of both? What was it? Well, I feel like we played fairly well. Not at our best. We did some silly mistakes. Like, I got uh, caught a lot, actually, in most of the games. Um, in a bit. But um, I think TSM, uh, uh, I've been on, a little bit on their downfall recently. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's kind of like the worst uh, moment for him to be on a downfall because it's qualifiers for Worlds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think we've kind of abused the fact that sometimes it'd be a little bit uh, overzealous, uh, yeah. especially uh, so sometimes on Subic plugs on Yannick. And I don't want to target a player, but uh, that's what I have in mind right now. He plucks somebody and barely miss it, but the moment he does that, we turn on him and then we mm -hmm. get a pick and then we snowball down on the tower, go free, etc., etc. So, yeah. yeah. You guys seemed really good at finding those picks and getting a lot off of it. Yeah. Uh, usually, uh, 
we've been having issues in warding, especially um, uh, around mid side. We've been warding poorly in most of our scrims lately. I don't know why. And uh, for some reason, in these games, sometimes we pull a little bit ahead, and then we'd ward massively, and then it'd be so easy for me to call picks. So yeah, obviously that's awesome. Who so, made the? Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, how did you guys prepare for TSM specifically, and did you predict like some of their picks and bans, like let's say Hunbats, all four games for the Gars? Actually, we know Gars loves Thor, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's why we ban in every single yeah. game. Uh, also, when we played him in, in the SPL, they played uh, Fenrir Kali, I think, if I remember. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so we went for the Thor ban, uh, got prepared for the Fenrir, prepared for the Kali, so we didn't mind either of these picks, and then he went for the Hunbats. I mean, it works for me when I'm carefree because he's an all-in god. Mm -hmm. He ults, bursts, and hopefully they die. If they don't die, then, well, you're kind of in a rough spot. So, uh, so yeah. So that's talk to me a little bit about comms and, like, Anatoly was mentioning a lot of momentum during the pregame show. Like, after you won game one, like, in your minds, was the series over? Like, do you guys just, did you feel like you played better going into those future games? Well, I told my team that only, I, I said, one down, two to go. But in my mind, obviously, I know that there's a chance we're going to lose, but obviously, like, I'm trying to like, motivate them, right? Yeah. So uh, we were super ex excited, but uh, we were trying to keep it like, uh, cool and like, uh, conservative a little bit because obviously, two games to go, at, at worst, I mean, uh, for them, obviously. So, uh, so yeah, trying to stay cool. And uh, after, like, after the second game, uh, we came in, said, all right, one more to go. Then we got this crushing defeat. <laughs> we were a little bit sad, but. Came back third, uh, six, uh, fourth game, and uh, there you go. There so go. was it was it rough for the rest of your players? You're the only one with LAN experience. Was this new? This is a new experience for them. How did they get into the the mindset to play on LAN, especially someone like Salt Machine who did so well, but they don't come from any kind of LAN experience. Well, Salt Machine is kind of like a a thing of its of its own. Uh, he's always in Soul Island doing his own thing. He's really good. He does a ton of work. Um, so when he came to Lan, he wasn't really nervous because he knew he, w he was going to go against Beckham, which is uh, one of the less experienced players, uh, so Lan-wise, I mean. Um, so he was, pre he was pretty calm. Uh, I'd say Adjust, our jungler, was super nervous. Yeah. First time he comes out of, he goes out of Ontario, uh, Canada, I mean. Uh, so he was super nervous. His uncle was with him to support him. Uh, he was super stressed. He couldn't eat before the, the, the matchup. He was super tired. Like, but he managed to pull out an amazing performance. Uh, I'm sad, super satisfied. Uh, I, I think... You know, uh, during the SPL, I'd say Salt Machine was probably the player, like you said, like lives on Soul Island, sometimes a little bit too focused on that island. Ooh. This game, we saw a lot of really good rotations, especially on the Guan Yu and the Osiris in that final game. Uh, tell me how, do you feel like he evolved, or as a team, did you guys just kind of work on that and making sure you would rotate and making sure your team was all, always prepared for the team fights? Because game one and two specifically, like, Team Soul may have put on so much pressure. Well... I don't know why in scrim, Salt is super conservative as lane, uh, as you mentioned. And in these games, you rotate it, so I was super happy because you really <laughs> did it. I was like, oh my god, there's a solo error on my team. No, but uh, seriously, uh, especially on Guan Yu, yeah. we relied on healing a ton, mm -hmm. especially after we fell, uh, fell off a little bit in the beginning of the game. So uh, we thought that if we could take some decent poke fights, have Guan Yu come over, either get a pick or even trading kills, spam the heals, disengage, spam heals, get full HP, re-engage, and rinse and repeat basically, uh, we get a massive advantage out of it, which we did. And it, I think it's kind of saved the game because we were getting kind of a, kind of bullied hard uh -huh. and uh, Solid came over and he was super strong. So yeah. Let's actually yeah, take a look at the brackets. You are going to be going up against Team Envious. Now, where do you feel like you might be stronger than them going up into this matchup? Um, I think Envy used to rely a lot on Cyclone Spin uh, in, a mega in, in a metagame where they could uh, sit on Soul Island, uh, Soul, Soul Island and get kills or get buffs and get super far ahead of, uh, using Cyclone Spin. But the metagame kind of shifted into a spot where Solo is more of a, a, a your frontliner, not really like a Bakasura, not really a, a damage dealing god. So you're there to be a bully in a tank or off tank, I guess. So uh, on, on that aspect, they used to be super strong on that, but it's not the case anymore. So I feel like our overall, our, our team fights by itself, uh, I think we're a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we lost to them four times in the SPL, so I can't really like, I can't really talk too much about it. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm hoping that we're gonna overcome them with uh, our ability, to, our ability to team fight. Whew, well, good luck and congratulations, and we'll see you on Thursday when you go up against Envy. But right now, everyone, we have Cloud9 versus Cognitive right after this short break.